I'm David Granite, and I'm the, uh, one of the people who's part of the Thyroid Eye Center at UCSD. But uh, we don't do anything separately uh, when it comes to thyroid, whether it's working and seeing patients or it's giving a talk. We do this all the time together, and Dr. Kikau and I were in Milan not long ago uh, giving a lecture like this uh, to specialists. And again, we did it combined because we don't think that you can take care of this disease in isolation. We think that we, you don't, can't take care of patients who are suffering from this problem in isolation. We think that everybody's got to be working together. So uh, if you look like this, you just might have thyroid eye disease, right, as they say. And hopefully we can get you in the end to look like that. Um, and uh, the, one of the problems that you'll find when you start thinking about this disease is that there's no name for it. Uh, dysthyroid ophthalmopathy, thyroid orbitopathy, Graves orbitopathy, endocrine ophthalmopathy, uh, thyroid, it just goes on. And even in the medical literature, if you go to search in PubMed or on Medline, and you search one of these, you might miss articles that are listed under the other. We don't have standardized terms for this. Um, we do know some things about it, though. We know that there is um, uh, some, some information that's worthwhile, some of which you obviously all know about, having gone through some of these talks and educating yourself. Uh, we know your thyroid status, what it's typically like when the eyes get involved, thyroid-associated orbitopathy. Um, my virus system just told me that I don't have any viruses, uh, which is <laughs> nice to know. Um, and we know what your euthyroid, somewhere around 10% uh, of the time, and Hashimoto's uh, or primary hypothyroidism, a little bit of it. Um, we get people who come into us and we say, you know, you look like you might have an eye problem and it may be thyroid related. No, I had my thyroid checked, it's fine. It can't be thyroid eye disease. There's a lot of you in the audience who were told you have an allergy, right? Or here are some allergy eye drops or have you been allergy tested? because your eyes are red and irritated, and they look like that. So there's some confusion about this because the thyroid levels and the eye thing doesn't go together exactly. In fact, although some are concurrent, 10% to 20% of the eye problems come out before the thyroid levels ever change in your bloodstream. So they don't go exactly together, and we'll talk about that uh, why in just a moment. And then you get most are concurrent, and then some happen afterwards. That's the bell curve of life. Some before, some in the middle, some after. And that's pretty typical. We do know that uh, the epidemiology in the general population is about 1.2% and about 0.4% uh, have Graves' disease. But the real truth is, the way you get Graves' disease is you live in the vice president's house. Because George Bush had it, Barbara Bush had it, and Tipper Gore had it. So that must be the th issue that's going on here. There's something about living in the Blair house with the vice president that does it. So, but the real way is this kind of slide that we show in medical meetings that is really important and valuable. But I think today there's other things that we can talk about. And so let's, let's sort of jump to the next step that this is an autoimmune disorder. That's really the issue. And that you get enlargement of the tissues around the eye. You all know about goiter, right? Well, the stuff that we see around the eye is essentially goiter of the eye. The tissues swell, the fat swells, the muscles swell. Not all the time, not the same amount. Oh, and by the way, why? Why doesn't it happen all the time the same way at every patient? Why doesn't every person have the same disease manifestations? Why do some people get fat and some people get muscle? Um, Don, do you know? Because I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. And when we do start to, yeah, when we fight, maybe we'll hear in the next few minutes, I'll have the answer. But um, the problem is that there's a lot we don't know. And, and although we know a lot, there's a lot we don't know. And that's the old saying, the more you know, the more you realize there is to know. And that's kind of what's this disease. So that leaves us with people who come to our center with maybe thyroid problems or probably thyroid problems, this eye problem, and very confused. Because the name of the thing is thyroid eye disease, yet we're telling you that if you get your thyroid levels together, it may not change at all what's happening to your eyes. Because it's the immune system that's causing both. In the old days, people didn't know that. So until you stop the immune system, you can't. We just heard about thyroidectomy. We don't do eyeectomies for this. You can't do eyeectomies for this. The, the best treatment for thyroid sometimes is to remove it. 
so that you get the end organ, the target of the immune system, out of the way. We don't have that option. We have to deal with the consequences and try and help you deal with it while you're going through it. And that's really hard. So the number one step is education. And all of you are doing that now. But that's what we'd have to do in our offices. There are two stages of development, right? In the beginning, you're inflamed, and then you get quiescent. This is so-called Rundle's curve. And on Rundle's curve, you see in the beginning, people get worse. Then they get about stable. Then they get a little better. They never quite get back to where they started. In thyroid disease, on average, it's a year. On average. Anybody here average? No. So you may be different. But on average, if we put everybody together, more or less a year. If we're going to intervene to try and help something, we don't want to do it while you're getting worse. We don't even want to do it when you're up here. We want to do it when you're out here. So it gives new meaning to the word patient. Because you're waiting for all this time, and we're sitting here going, yeah, we know a lot about this, and we can't do anything. And that is just not good. So that's part of our job in educating you, is the more you can partner in your own disease and what's happening to you, the more you understand it, the more it makes sense. So we measure you when you come in because we want to find out where you are. And we keep taking measurements until we prove that you're stable. Then we can do something. Then we can intervene. In the meantime, we try and make you comfortable. In the meantime, we look for if the optic nerve, which we'll talk about in a little bit, gets involved. If it does, which is really rare, then we have to jump early. But hopefully that won't happen. So type 1 ocular involvement is where the fat gets involved. Now, it's hard to see. I don't know if we can drop the lights or if we can get a better view. But uh, right here, is, this is a CAT scan. And there are muscles there. And the eyes push forward, but the muscles aren't big. It's the fat that got big and is pushing it forward. And then this is type 2, protruding with retracted. And you can see maybe the muscles are fat. And those muscles should be about as thin as they are up here. This is a classic sign of thyroid eye disease. That's why we get a CAT scan. The muscle itself is fat, and the tendon, which attaches it to a muscle, is thin. It's called fusiform. Get this big muscle and then a little tendon. That's different than some other diseases. So it helps us decide what's happening. So now we're stuck. We've got people who are frustrated. They have disfigurement. I'm going to talk about that in a second. They don't look like themselves. They often have double vision because the eye muscles that keep your eyes looking in the same place at the same time aren't. Now they're looking at different places. So they are doubly unhappy. Well, we figured this out a long time ago. And I would see the patient, and I'd go find Don Kikawa, and I'd say, hey, you got to see this person if you can. Can you get him into your clinic? And then he would go see him. Then he'd track me down. And then we'd find Leah Levi, who's the neuro-ophthalmologist who worried about the optic nerve. We'd say, can you take a look at this person? And we'd run around, and it was crazy. And we said, that's ridiculous. So Don Kikawa, who's our oculoplastic specialist, and now Bobby Korn, who's joined him, they deal with the bulging forward of the eye, the pulling back of the eyelids, the change in your appearance. Dr. Leah Levi, who's our neuro-ophthalmologist, she worries about that little time, very rare, when your optic nerve gets involved. And then me. It's an old picture, you can tell. So, <laughs> Uh, I worry about the eye muscles. You can see we all need to be there together. And we figured that out in 1997. 15 years ago, we decided we like each other. Why not get in the room together? And so Dr. Levi, Dr. Kikau, myself, and now Dr. Korn all get in the room together. And we make a plan at once. With you listening to the discussion out loud. I don't have much of a filter, so I'm saying what I'm thinking. Right? You're hearing all of it. I might turn to Donkey Cow and say, hey, Don, what about blah, blah, blah? And he'll say to me, well, what do you think about da, da, da? And we're having that conversation with you right there. You hear the whole thing. You're part of it. And we're all there together making a cohesive plan. It changed our professional lives and the ability to help you. We do better now. We have better care because we improve communication. Believe it or not, I put that first. Communication. We have coordinated care. We're all together on the same page. It's much easier for you, one visit. Maybe it's a little bit longer day, but that's one visit instead of three. We have the whole compliance. Everybody knows why we're doing what we're doing. And then from a research standpoint, we've learned a whole lot. 
So I hope this is going to work. I want you to see uh, something that aired here uh, because they thought what we did in the combined team was pretty cool. So let's see if we can make this play. So one day you look in the mirror and you don't even recognize yourself. It's called thyroid eye disease and doctors say there is hope to get back to normal. If the eyes are the window to the soul, then Joan Hamm is bearing it all. I was always really aware of my eyes. She thought she could handle it, that she could make it go away. I just couldn't fathom that in this day and age there is nothing you can do to stop this mm -hmm. protrusion of the eye. The Southern California mom suffers from a thyroid eye disease, a bulging and swelling of the eyes. Patients don't look like themselves. The eye bulges out so far, it becomes uncomfortable for them. They feel a deep ache behind the eye. Dr. Don Kikawa specializes in TED, thyroid eye disease. He says it occurs from an immune system attack that targets the thyroid gland. And most who suffer from this also have Graves' disease, a hyperactivity of the thyroid. The eye is housed in a box called the orbit. It's a bony box, and the tissues have no place to you go. You need to hear this directly from him himself. The tissues so. get so swollen. But that I, I want to just see parts of it. Here at Shiley Eye Center at UC San Diego's Medical Center, Joan Hamm is seeing a dream team. This disease touches every part of the eye, and that means you need very specialists. Each specialist works side by side, so when her disease stabilizes, she'll look like this again. And if you can learn to accept that, then I think um, it makes it a little bit easier going through it. It's all part of the TED journey, the pain, often not the worst part. Imagine you wake up and you look in the mirror and you don't look like yourself. That's devastating to people. We've had uh, people who have said their grandchildren have been afraid to be with them. It really interferes with everything that they do. Six out of seven TED sufferers are women, but when men get it, it's often more severe. Kathleen Flynn, who heads the Graves Disease Foundation, says it's all about awareness. When you're diagnosed with something like that, it's very, very scary. and. You know, you, you need information, and, and when you do get the information, it goes a long way. Once a patient gets a proper diagnosis, there's a light at the end of the often dark tunnel. The surgery seen here on a patient with extreme TED is that light. It's not cosmetic surgery. This is something that's reconstructive or restorative that gets uh, somebody back to where they were before the disease devastated them. We don't actually remove the eyeball. All we do is gently push it aside. Dr. Kikawa and Dr. Bobby Korn work together to remove bone from the orbit and to take out the fat that causes the swelling. We heard details about that in just a few minutes. Even with just one eye surgery complete, the difference is remarkable. She'll feel almost immediate relief from the pain and pressure. Joan Hamm is counting the days until her surgery. She says she's no longer afraid. And I think that's comforting that there's an end and there's an end that... So uh, I'll shut it off there. I, I think um, so you get the idea of what we're trying to accomplish with all this uh, and uh, the idea of having a team. Uh, and if I don't put this mic back up, my friend in the back is going to kill me because he's recording me, right? And it's, yeah. <laughs> um, so we, we know that we got this right. We know that the team model is necessary for Graves' disease. And uh, so because of that, um, we also know that uh, mimicry is the best form of flattery, and there's been a whole bunch of other things that have happened. University of Minnesota copied what we've done. Uh, they came out, and we worked with them, showed them how to do it. Uh, and then uh, UGOGO, which is the European Graves uh, Orbitopathy Group, uh, was founded in 1999, ITEDS in 2006, to get people to work together. And we feel very proud that we were out there in front of getting the idea of teamwork for this. Uh, we use a five-step plan when we take care of people. First is medical treatment, which I think you're going to hear about after we're all done. Um, then Botox and prisms, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Orbit, which Dr. Kikawa will talk about. I'll talk about the eye muscles and then the lids. That's the order that we take it because if you don't, the, the surgery will mess up what you did before. So you have to be very careful about how you do this. And if you do, you can end up with something that looks like this, a patient who came in with really bad thyroid eye disease. In fact, one of the people who triggered us to create the thyroid center. Uh, and we uh, were able to get his eyes back, get him straight, and then get his lids done. So we can really do that. We have learned so much in the thyroid eye center. This is just some of the research and work that we published and presented that came out of our experiences. So much of it generated by you asking us questions we couldn't answer. And we said, darn it, we better, we better find out the answer. And I'm going to highlight one thing and then bring up Dr. Kikawa. 
Here, here's the thing that I think is one of the most powerful things that we've learned. We would walk into the room and patient after patient in one day would cry. They would sit in the chair and they would cry. And we said, you know, when you see one patient, it's one thing, but when you see it all day long, you start to realize, dummy, this is really upsetting to people. This is really messing with them. More than just having thyroid disease, this is really a big deal. So we actually did a study to look at and quantify exactly what that meant. And we looked at, uh, it, and we published a study on depression, and we looked at two different groups. One group had the eye findings and thyroid disease, and the other group didn't have any eye findings but still had thyroid disease, because we didn't want the thyroid to confuse it. Let's say if you have thyroid, but one has eye findings, the other one doesn't, what happens? Well, I bet Dr. Kikawa $20. I bet him that double vision was gonna tick people off the most. They couldn't function, it was frustrating, and he said to me, no. I think the change in their appearance is gonna get them more upset. And I went, yeah, it's just because you do it, all right? This is what I, I'm telling you, double vision is worse. So uh, we looked at depression. We found levels of depression and anxiety that rival cancer and AIDS in people who have Graves' disease with the eye findings. It is real. You have a bad disease, it's messing with you and messing with how you feel. It is okay to admit that. It is okay to ask for help about that. But what I will tell you also, it is more associated with disfigurement than diplopia. Destruction of the way you look, not looking like yourself, hit people worse than double vision. And one of my patients said to me, Dr. Granite, I can get rid of the double vision. <laughs> I can't change the way I look. So this is really powerful. So when I lecture to doctors, I always talk about this, that the psychologic burden should be considered when you're planning treatment. You have to think about that. This is a big deal impacting people. So with that, I'm gonna get out of the way because normally, Dr. Kikawa will do his orbital decompression before I do any of the muscle work. And so I want him to do what we do in the clinic, which is he will go next. <laughs>